Zadon Danny, Electro Ninja here, and welcome back to Nerd Chat here on Electro Ninja's Lab. And I am here with my fellow hosts. I'm Jack. I'm Joker. And today I was we. Hang on for a second. <laughs> You're good. Today we're going to be talking about Dungeons and Dragons. Because, of course, uh, the new rule books are out. Um, at this point in time, uh, you can pretty easily get either the... Uh, the Player's Handbook has been out for a f uh, few weeks at this point. And then the DMG... Um, I just got mine. Um, but uh, certain places... Uh, uh, game stores have had them for a few weeks now. Um, and some people have gotten them earlier. Or some have gotten them later. So on and so forth. Um, so we thought we would talk about... The new stuff for 2024. Um, Jack has not read any of this because he doesn't have it. Um, but Joker and I both have the player's handbook. Um, and I have the DMG. So we'll just like... Mostly we'll be leading the conversation. Um, and we'll see what... Uh, and Jack, you can respond with however you like. <laughs> oh, yay, yay. Sounds good. So... Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. So, Joker, was there anything specific that really stood out to you when you were uh, looking uh, when you were reading or glancing through the player's handbook? Character sheets. Character sheets. Okay. Fair enough. Um. So, I like. I think it's kind of interesting because they're very different. From what we uh, um, what we used to have, um, I'm just gonna pull up both uh, both versions of the character sheet, uh, right, real quick. Um, so, uh, current uh, our current game that we're playing through is a um, uh, we're still using the um, 2020 uh, uh, the 2014 rule book, um, and then we're going to be doing um, uh, it will, but we, it, we're going to be putting in little bits and pieces from the 2024, but it's not going to be, uh, we're not like fully committing to anything with 2024 for a while, um, because no one has it. Um, <laughs> but if we look at this, okay. Um, so obviously, uh, so before the handbook, obviously it had big name and all of the information about the, uh, the, uh, the character, uh, up at the top, um, such as their class, their subclass, their um, their level, their race, their sub race, all that jazz. Um, uh, now they have most of that in the uh, upper left hand corner, rather than all of that across the entire thing. So you have your character name, your background, your class, your species, and your subclass. Um, obviously, yeah, they changed it from races to species. How do we feel about that, just out of curiosity? Eh, seems like semantics to me. Fair. Joker? I like it. You like it? It makes okay. more sense in my brain. Okay. I mean, uh, to me, species kind of feels like it, uh, more of a sci-fi, uh, more like if it was sci-fi, then it would make more sense. But since this is kind of uh, more fantasy, I think races is fine. So, I don't know. Um, and then obviously your level, your experience, your armor class, um, as well as you can choose whether or not you have your shield, um, stuff about the hit points and hit dice, which is kind of interesting because like, um, in the original book, uh, all of the armor class, your in uh, initiative, your speed, all that jazz, um, that was all right in the center. Um, now it's basically, uh, the armor class is kind of right in the middle at the top and then hit points and hit dice and all that jazz is just off to, uh, is basically the right side of the top. So, which I think is fine. It's just kind of a different, uh, it's a different method. Um, and then underneath you have the uh, big Dungeons and Dragons logo. And then on the right is initiative, speed, size, and passive perception. Um, which, I don't know. It, it's kind of, uh, I think the, uh, the, 
The most interesting thing to me is that the passive perception, um, bef- uh, with the old one, it was like at the bottom of your skills and all that jazz, which was all to the left. Um, and now it's up at the top, very clear, uh, pretty obvious. So, I don't know, kind of fun. Okay. Um, yeah. And then, um, they kind of exp- made a lot of stuff bigger, um, such as uh, each of your different um, strength, dex, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. They made each section bigger, um, mostly because of the fact that they included all of the different um, attributes that are conne- uh, that are connected to it, or uh, your profi- or your skills, I should say, that are connected to uh, to those specific proficiencies and so, uh, so on and so forth. Um, which I think is, uh, that's kind of makes it easier, honestly. Um, because obviously before it had, um, your saving throws were separate and your, um, skills were separate and you had to have like the little, uh, extra information. Um, and I think that, uh, I don't know. I think, I think that this looks a lot better, um, for that part for sure. Um, and then, obviously, below those is your equipment training and proficiencies. Um, and then, underneath your initiative speed, size, and passive perception is your weapons and damage uh, cantrips. Um, below that is your class features. Um, and below that is special traits and feats. Which, I think that uh, um, weapons feels a bit small to me personally but maybe that's just me because obviously yeah so i'm kind of used to the way that uh, that we have it in the uh 2014 character sheet but i don't know um and then obviously the spell uh um they come i think it's interesting that they combined your uh, bio page and your spell page. That feels kind of weird to me. Oh, I like it. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. mean, it, it, it's I fine. It's simpler because you have you have uh, two pages instead of like three or four pages now, and then like it shows like uh, which way you can um, cast them, how many spell slots you have, and so on. Like it shows it way easier. Um, just for me, in general, like, level one, you have, like, four spell slots and so on. Um, and then also what required for the spell, which is helpful, because yeah. on the other one, you didn't have a lot of room to write. You only had the spell name, and then you had to go search for what the spell actually did. Yeah, that's fair. Also, I, I think it's kind of funny, because you're... Um... Also, your coins, uh, your uh, currents, your money and stuff, that is on the um, bottom of your spells page now, which is, it, that just feels weird to me. I don't know. Like, granted, it is still underneath equipment, but because of the fact that I'm so used to it being in your um, uh, in your first page, it's uh, that's kind of uh, what's throwing me off. Same with la- uh, languages is also, uh, is just above that, so... I don't know, it's kind of weird. Yeah, well, you also have room for your weapons and your damage cantrips, anything that uses, like, yeah. damage and stuff, which is helpful, I think. Yeah. I would say that it looks like the first page really feels like this is the stuff that you're going to be using a lot, um, and the second page is kind of like, here's some extra information, you may not necessarily be dealing with this stuff as much, and, <sighs> like, you can probably put your... Um, your weapons and your cantrips and or uh, your weapons and your spells in that first uh, little box at the top, just so you can easily uh, which are ones that you use the most, and then you can um, glance at the bigger uh, you can look at the bigger information when you're actually dealing with it uh, specifically. So I don't know. I think it could be interesting. I think it could absolutely be interesting. Um, I, I, I have to see how people would use it, um, when we first, uh, uh, when we first start using it, but, 
because right now I don't have the, um, we're not using that, uh, this one quite yet because we have another game right now and we're not gonna, this game started before the rule books came out. So <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll see exactly what we do exa uh, um, at a later date, but yeah. I don't know. Um, I, uh, blah, blah, blah. one sec. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, your different species is less important now, right? Your what? Your species in, let me see here, 186, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, your, uh, um, Whichever race your uh, your uh, your race is less important than it was in um in the previous uh, in uh, when we were playing uh in 2014. Or am I wrong about that? No, I don't want I want races. Okay, here we go. Yeah, because like if you go to your races, they have um. Like, they still have some very important details and such like that. Yeah, but um, not not as much as they did in, like, the other handbook. Like, yeah. Dragonborn gets one page, another gets another page. Yeah, and it's not, like a, uh, it's not like a two-sided page. It's a single page for each and every I mean, single. Ulf gets, Ulf gets a two-sided page more of, because there's more Ulf stuff than... Yeah. The other ones. But, like, Gnome, Goliath, Halfling, Human, Orc, they're all getting, like, one page. Tiefling gets two pages, because, I mean, there's more information on that one. Yeah, but again, with yeah, tiefling, so like, uh, Tieflings, there's a lot more stuff with them that they can do, because it's all different demons and stuff. So Yeah, and then else you have your different elves. Yeah. Drow, high elf, wood elf. So you have that information, but yeah, you get less less information now on uh what you can do. Yeah, which I think that might be actually a good. Uh, I'm not certain if that's a good thing or a bad thing, because when they eventually, I think it makes it more simple. It does make it simpler for sure. Um, but it also means that when they eventually make a uh, uh, um, an expansion to what races you can play, um, I think that that's gonna. Uh, I kind of think that that's gonna be in the monster manual. Um, they can significant. Uh, they can basically keep each uh, since they've already got it kind of set to being a page. They're not gonna feel as much pressure to make sure that it's got all of this extra information as they did in um, any of the other books. Because currently, um, all of the different races are kind of scattered across all of the different books. Like, I think some of them are in different monster manuals and stuff like that. Um, or the different monster books. So now they can basically, they might be able to just like put it all in the monster manual and then you have like a, a, a whole bunch of different races that you can play with. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm intrigued to see exactly how they're going to handle that. Um, but, yeah. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Um, how do you feel about the fact that Artificer's not in the book? <laughs> Well, Artificer was never in the book. True, it wasn't in the original book. Um, but considering the fact that it is now a one of... Uh, it's not like the most popular class there is, but it's uh, it's definitely popular. It I is was... it's definitely used a lot more. Yeah. Like... Honestly, I think they could have uh, put it there. Um, I also like in the class, like area they put like hey these are wizard spells these are um they put the spells up farther so you can actually see like hey these are the spells that you can use instead of putting them all in the 
back. Like Warlock has their spells on yeah the page and like the scene scripts. Yeah, so you, so you can basically uh, so yeah, if uh, when you're looking at your specific um uh, class, uh, you can basically uh, you'll be able to get every single piece of your information that you need in one solid place. And you won't be having to like flip that. through that. And that that is actually incredible. I love that. So basically at most when you're like setting up your character, maybe you're going to be like going to like one or t uh, two or three, I would say, different locations. You're uh, probably one uh, to your background, your race, and your class, but the majority of it is going to be in your class, and you'll be able to look through every single piece of that information. So, yeah, I think it's, I think that's good. I, I, I will say that that is definitely much better. Um, I think, do they actually have this? They do not have this, uh, the spell descriptions in there but so you will still need to go to the back to um look at your uh, all of your uh, all of the different spell descriptions but like you, you kind of had to do that anyways and a lot of the times you're only really going to be looking at that when you're first deciding your spells um well you'll look at it but you know what i mean it's it's definitely less complicated though for sure and I'm I'm glad of that um, and I think that it's it's gonna be very helpful for the newcomers I think that 2024 might be um, especially since uh, D&D &D is has been getting more and more popular over the years so I think that um, there's a lot of things that uh, people are going to get more and more excited about it Um but I also think that there is a chance that some people are going to get turned off from it because they're, uh, um, one of the problems with the 2024 rule book is that they've specifically said, um, that it is supposed to be, um, you can use either, or you can basically use your, if you want to use your 2024 rule book, um, you can, if you want to use your 2014 rule books, then you can. Um, and while that's, cool and all i think that it's also going to be um it's going to be stressful for uh, for some newcomers because um i'm sure that some people are going to be like do i need to have both books and um depending on your uh depending on your specific group you may so i think that that's going to be uh, i think that the early uh, the early times with uh, the 2024 rule books is going to be tough because there's going to be some people that are going to be like, we need to have the 2020, uh, we need to be using the 2024 rule books, period. And then there's going to be those who are going to be saying, we need, to, we're just going to use the 2014 rule books, period. And then there's going to be those that are going to be kind of using a weird combination of the two. So, I don't know. That's, the, those are my thoughts at this point in time. Um, I think that's going to be... I'll be back. You'll be back? Yeah, maybe. Okay. I gotta go eat. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Jack, what do you think? <laughs> Just from what we've said. Um, <clears throat> I think when anything changes, especially when it's a big, you know, pop culture thing, that there's a lot that happens to it, and there's a lot that... Um, for whatever reason, you know, people get up in arms about it, and I don't always understand the drama. That's that's fair, yeah. Yeah, I think... I don't know. It's it's going to be... Whatever happens, people are, uh, people are going to deal with it. Um, I think a lot of the problems that people are having with D&D is less about um, the 2024 rule books themselves. Because as a whole, I've seen mostly good th uh, um, people saying good things about it. Can we necessarily trust that? Eh, it's kind of debatable because uh, um, a lot of the people that are, ta uh, that are talking about these books at this point in time are um, people who got the books for free because they were c uh, content creators and so on and so forth. 
So they got to, uh, uh, so they got the books for free. So obviously that uh, even if they are not necessarily having to, um, uh, uh, even if they don't necessarily, uh, uh, they don't have to say anything specific. Um, they, uh, and Wizards of the Coast doesn't have any control over what they say. They're going to look more favorably on it no matter what. And they've many of them have actually said this, that they are going to look more favorably on it because they didn't have to pay for it. Um, so I think it's going to be a yep. v very complicated issue. Um, I think that the smaller YouTubers are going to be the ones that you're really going to want to pay attention to. Um, what they say about the uh, about the books because they didn't get it for free. They actually paid for it. Um, such as yeah. myself. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, shameless plug here. Yeah, shameless plug. Um, like, obviously, we're going to be going kind of... Uh, we're going to be slowly getting into this. Um, because many... Uh, um, J uh, Joker probably will be pl uh, playing it a lot more than either of us will. Because uh, he uh, uh, he's in groups. He's told us about this. That he's in groups that are already using the 2024 rulebooks exclusively. Um, right. While we are, um, uh, most of uh, most of our group does not have the 2024 rulebooks. They have the 2014 rulebooks. Um, right. So, and I think at this point in time. I am, uh, uh, me and Joker are the only ones who actually have the 2024 rule books. And I'm the only one with I think that's true. multiple, <clears throat> uh, with multiple uh, books of them. So I have like, I have the player's handbook and the dungeon master's guide. Um, so yeah. And I know that, um, I know Astrid's not going to be getting it, uh, um, for a while. Um, so I think, I don't know, it, it's going to be. It's going to take some time before anyone is actually, uh, before we're going to actually be fully able to talk about it, um, in terms of what it's like running a campaign, because we're, uh, we, uh, we run our games pretty slow. Um, yeah, we do. <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that turns out, but yeah. Um, so, and I, uh, and Honestly, that's fine. Um, I think the, the, the most interesting thing that I'm intrigued to see is how it's going to play with using a bit from both. So, um, as some uh, as the uh, the DM of our uh, of our campaign, um, I uh, and I ha since I have both books, I am actually slowly putting in 2024 rules into the uh, uh into the actual campaign um like we have some dire wolves that and i specifically took the 2024 ones um uh -huh. and i think i took i'm not 100 certain if, if this is actually the um there's gonna be a vampire at some point that i'm using and that's uh and i think that that's the 2024 rulebook version uh, I'm not 100% certain. I just I know for a fact that the uh, dire wolf is, but uh, beyond that, I'm not 100% certain on any of the others. Um, and we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. Um, but yeah. Uh, as for the DMG, um, I think it is interesting. Um, this is something that Jenny D talked about in her video about it. And the DMG, uh, the, um, previous DMG, the 2014, uh, uh, or the 2014, uh, rule book, um, that one was not about teaching someone how to DM while well, this one is, which I think that that's going to hmm. be really helpful for new DMs. And I could imagine, don't uh, don't quote me on this because I, I'm not 100% certain on this, but I think that more people are going to be willing to learn how to DM because of this book. Um, That's fair. So, 
I'm not 100% certain on that, but because of the fact that it does go over a lot of the different information, it is a book about teaching uh, you how to DM, unlike the previous one, which mostly just had, like, spouted information at you. Um, uh -huh. I think that that's going to be helpful, to say the least. Um, but, yeah. Um, on top of the fact that it has a lot of um, these little papers throughout the uh, throughout the book um, to basically help you out with um, checking with your party, seeing what they want to do. Um, like, the first one that you get is Game Expectations. And basically, you would hand these out to your players and say, hey... Here, uh, um, here is some information. What are some things that you want? Uh, what you want? And it basically goes over um, game theming of flavor, potentially sensitive uh, elements, um, uh, players' hopes and expectations, and at the table concerns. And I'm intrigued to see if this is used at all. It, it is the first and foremost thing, um, because I'm certain that some people are going to use them. Some people are not going to use them. Um, but it's, a lot of this stuff is stuff that you would be talking about during your session zero and such like this. This feels like it's more of something that you could do if you do not have the time for a session zero. You can basically give these out to the, uh, to the different players and then have them give them back to you before, uh, before the actual game, uh, before the first game day. And then, um, you can look through all of their information and figure out, okay, this is what we need to do. Um, and this might even be something that you do before session zero. So, yeah. Um, another thing that I feel about this is that they are trying to figure out ways that the younger audiences can get into Dungeons and Dragons because a lot of, um, Dungeons and Dragons is usually more for the adults, um, because, all, uh, which understandable but this kind of feels like it could be something that um parents could definitely uh set up for their kids so that you can um uh, like a parent could run d uh, it feels more formulated to that so that you could uh, so that a parent could uh, could basically run a game for their kids um or that they could uh, run a game for their kids and their uh, and their families or whatever um, be a little bit more family friendly. Obviously, it's not perfectly family friendly because Dungeons and Dragons never has been. But I think that it's stepping in the right direction. Um, they've been kind of doing this thing lately um, with some extra books that are more for kids um, to run uh, to play D and D, um, which I've been noticing at my local game store. So I think that they are trying to figure out ways to basically figure out, okay, what works and what doesn't work for uh, uh, making it so that kids can actually, uh, kids can play D and D um, and not just the adults. Um, and I could see like youth groups and uh, school clubs actually getting more and more into D and D over the next few years. So, and I personally would be thrilled with that, but um, I don't know. It's, I think it's going to be fun. Um, oh, yeah. Um, so they also have, like, a uh, travel planner for uh, in the book. Um, I have no idea how the heck this is uh, going to play out, but it's basically stuff to do with um, traveling around the world and such like that. Um, it, I don't know. It's... I think it's going to be fun. Um, but, but, but. Oh, and it also talks a little bit about how um, you can handle um, creature sizes. Um, and not, ju uh, not just how you would handle it for a, um, a square, uh, the square standard, but also how you would handle it for the hexagon standard. Because a lot of the books, a lot of uh, maps actually have hexagons, but you don't really use that too much. <laughs> so, I don't know. But, um, 
they've kind of like uh, they've got a chart that basically explains how each of them would work um such as tiny can get four per square uh slash four per hex um small can get one per square one per hex medium one per uh, uh, uh or small or medium one square one hex um large is four squares or three hexagons uh huge is nine squares or seven hexagons and gargantuan is 16 or more or 12 or more um respectively so yeah i don't know it's it's definitely interesting it also uh, shows like some examples of what can work for heck uh, for cover for both of them which much simpler to understand um blah, 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 blah. Um, it has a DM toolbox to basically talk about alignments and organization, uh, chasing, and um, so something more about uh, a, a lot of D and D kind of feels like you're stuck in a, sp in a single spot. They've actually added like a whole bunch of information on like how you want to do like if you're chasing somebody and so on and so forth, so that it still makes sense. Um, because a lot of times, if you're um, if you're playing D, uh, when you're playing D and D, a lot of the time you have to think, okay, what is uh, what's disengagement? What is uh, do we want to do this? Do we want to do that? Um, it, are these care uh, are these things going to be constantly disengaging so that they don't provoke, um, and so on and so forth? So I'm I'm not a hundred percent certain how they're going to play with that, but I think it will be interesting. Um, and it also explains how to create a character or create a magic item as well. And also creating a spell. So I'm, I'm excited about, the, uh, about these specifically because I feel like a lot of the creating of monsters, magic items, um, creating spells, um, this information is going to be so freaking helpful to a lot of different players, um, or, uh, and a lot of different, uh, um, DMs. Like, the creating a spell, to me, that feels like this could be something extremely fun where um, maybe uh, the DM can basically be like, okay, so you're a wizard. Do you want to create a spell? Do you want to work to actually create your own spells? And basically, you can work together to basically figure out, okay, what this is how this works. This is what this does. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and it's not... A huge amount of stuff but it does give an, a, a decent amount of information so that you're actually able to deal with it um so yeah and it makes it so uh, and it gives you some information for how to balance things so that it's not like oh fuck you're uh, you're suddenly doomed or whatever um yeah that's nice yeah and you won't be like, yeah, let me give my player this um, unbelievable, uh, this spell that is like, um, just, for, uh, just for shits and giggles, 15d10 um, <laughs> at level one. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, that, uh, oh, wow. Uh, uh, like, obviously, it's to, uh, to help you not do that kind of mistake. Um, well, this is, uh, this basically explains that it's... Um, uh, so like for uh, so basically they explain for spell damage, they do um. Uh, what type uh, wh uh the type of uh the level spell so cantrip to a nine, um whether or if it's uh, one target it's ba they uh, increment it in uh, numbers of d tens, and then multiple targets they do it by d sixes, um, although it goes up faster. Kind of sorta. Or no, no, no. Uh, only uh, so basically, there's a jump between. Um, no, either uh, either way, it's a jump between uh, eight and nine, basically of three. So you start out with one of each thing, and then it goes up by one each time. Oh no, there there is a there's a few jumps, but you get my point. But yeah, I don't know. It's 
it's fun. I think that that's going to be a lot of really interesting information on how they're going to, uh, on how you're going to handle it, on how different players are going to handle it. Um, it also gives some uh, help with creating NPCs. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is actually going to be really helpful. Um, they have a chart. Um, a, a, well, sorry, a rolling table for choosing names. Um, so they have a, a common names, guttural names, lyrical names, uh, monosyllab, uh, ah, monosyllab, how is that, that word monosyllabic. is, monosyllabic, thank you, I cannot speak, monosyllabic names, sinister names, whimsical names, and looks like that's it, um, and basically each of these is, uh, uh rolling a D12, uh, D12, and you can basically choose your name and then you can choose your uh, last name and that's gonna be i think that's gonna be really helpful for a lot of the uh, for a lot of people like granted um you're quickly gonna get like several people that are gonna have the same surnames and uh first names and such like that but to start off with it's a lot of help so yeah and you can also keep track of uh, they also have some information for that um Stuff with settlements. Oh. That, okay, so they, uh, they have, like, a bunch of information on how to, like, create a town, which is helpful. Um, obviously, magic items are in here later. Uh, the one thing that I am really excited about, and a lot of people have actually, uh, a few different people have been talking about this, is the Bastions. Um... And while I don't want to get too much into that, um, let me go ahead and open this up so that we can actually look at this. Okay, here we go. So, bastions are basically uh, something that you, if you want to, if if you and your players want to, you can basically get a, a home base. Uh, and um, they uh, the book suggests one per player. Um... I personally think that that's insane, but <laughs> especially if you have like a large group, that's, that's insanity. Um, though most people will probably go for, um, uh, I, I, I imagine that a lot of people are going to set this up so that it's one per group and then, um, maybe they'll just expand it a little bit for exact, uh, on exact details on how they want to handle it. Um, and uh, they they suggest doing uh, getting a bastion around level five, um, which I think that's reasonable. Um, sometimes I, I could see this going earlier. I could see this happening later. Um, but yeah. Um, but basically, you can design it. You can get uh, all sorts of different things. You can get uh, um, uh, you can fully build it out. But for the record, as to how much information there is on this freaking thing, uh, this is still, yeah, this is still more. Uh, bu, 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 still going, still going, still going, still going. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Okay, so this, so it's about 20 pages worth just talking about the Bastion. So. <laughs> Yeah, so obviously it's gonna, it's gonna take a lot of time to go through this and actually read it. Um, but this is one of those things that I'm so excited about that I really want to read through. Um, like I said, I just got the book today, so I'm not 100%. Uh, I do not know when I'm gonna actually incorporate this into my games, but yeah, personally, I'm excited. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's like right at the end, right before you get to the gloss, uh, the appendixes and the glossaries. Um, but yeah. And the maps, there are so many maps and I kind of love it. Um, so they have several, uh, they have a few dungeons, they have a few towns, um, they have a, ca a caravan, um, 
they have a dragon's lair, um, a, a farmhouse, a keep, um, manor, mine. They have a ship, which, can I just say, this would have been so fucking useful, like, a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> like i still prefer the ship that uh, that i found um uh, for the monster campaign but um i think that if uh, if this uh, if i had this it would have been so much easier to just be like okay here let me just give you this ship this is how you uh, how you can deal with this <laughs> uh, i don't know well, <clears throat> unfortunately, I have to get going. Okay, so that's probably go that's probably a good spot to end it. Anyways, this was a for, uh, this was a forty episode, uh, forty minutes uh, long nerd chat. Uh, so we did good. Anyways, uh, hopefully good you guys have been us. good for us, even though we lost Joker. Anyways, I've been Electro Ninja. He's been Jack, and we will see you guys next time. But on. <laughs>